If you like to work in Blender using add-ons and you try to install them in Blender version 4.2.2 or above and you're having problems, then don't worry about it. I was confused as well, okay? There's been a lot of changes done to Blender and especially to how add-ons work, how you install them, etc, etc. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you everything you need to know about how to install add-ons, why you're getting all these errors and how to avoid them. Okay, let's go. We are in Blender 4.2.2, you can see in the bottom right, and I'm going to show you how to correctly install add-ons in this version of Blender or higher, unless they change shit again, okay? So now first what you want to do is you want to go here to preferences, and you will see that the window here and the options are a bit different. If you were installing add-ons before in, in previous versions of Blender, you you know you know that there's gonna be only the add-on window right the add-on tab now we're gonna have extensions and add-ons together and they are different and it's really important to understand that now extensions are those that come with blender natively so like loop tools node wrangler edit mesh tools etc etc if you don't know what the hell i'm talking about you're probably very new to blender so what i would really recommend you start with the basics and we have a fantastic course for the basics which is called hard surface accelerator it's been bought by thousands of people by now we have tons of testimonials you know people saying how much it helped them and allow them to actually gain proficiency in blender in really short period of time especially if you're into hard surface modeling so go ahead and check it out the link is in your video description now going back to this situation right so the extensions are add-ons that come with blender now in previous versions you didn't have to have an online access to install them now you do so when you click on extensions the first thing you'll see is that you need to allow online access to blender which means blender is going to access your internet so let's click that and now we can look for add-ons or actually extensions that come with blender so let's say we're going to install loop tools so we're going to go here and click on install you don't have to do anything else and then we're going to look for i don't know bull tool whatever and we're gonna install that and we're gonna install other things like 3d print toolbox f2 edit mesh tools you know the list goes on and then you want to install node wrangler and you're gonna type node wrangler and fuck all will happen now that's what i was confused the first time so node wrangler was moved to add-ons don't ask me why okay so here if you type node wrangler uh, you're going to see that. I'm guessing there's going to be some smart ass who will not tell me why it's supposed to move to Blender uh, to add-ons. I don't give a shit. My point is that this is fucking confusing, right? It should be one tab for everything, unless they're planning some, I don't know, some shenanigans later on. But anyway, the point is, this is where the node regular is, okay? So you need to enable it from this window, from this, uh, from this tab. So if you're looking for node regular under extensions, you're not going to find it, okay? So enable it in here and you're good to go. Now, save perhaps, and you know, your initial setup of Blender is kind of complete. You have all the extensions that come with Blender. Now comes the juicy bit because you want to install external add ons like box cutter, hard ops, mesh machine, machine tools, you know, material works, kit, whatever. Normally, what you would do in previous versions of Blender, you would go here to preferences and you would go to add ons, right? And you would go to install from disk. There was a button here which is gone. Now you have to click here, install from disk, and you'll be installing add on from disk. Now, don't do it, okay? Not the best idea. Reason being is because Blender sometimes may recognize certain add ons as extensions. And if it does that, it will not work in most cases. So a safer way of doing this would be to drag and dropping add-ons into Blender window. So close this, right? Grab your add-on. I'm going to grab hard ops. Okay, I'm going to drag and drop it in here and release it. You will see that window. Click OK. Wait a little bit. You see Blender now installed hard ops. Now we're going to drag and drop the box cutter. We're going to click OK. And the same thing going to happen. Boom, box cutter is installed. And you can do the same thing with all add-ons and they should be correctly categorized as extensions or add-ons, okay? So once you do that, go here to preferences and remember to save it because that's important. If you don't see the save thing, you just go here and disable the auto save. I like to have control over what I'm saving, you know what I mean? So that's how you do it. Now, if you're going to be installing from disk, which is what I was doing, I was in the world of pain. I was getting Python errors, conflicts, Blender crashes, all kinds of shit, right? 
And I had a short conversation with, with Jerry, which is Master Zeon, and he told me, like, dude, you know, look at this Python error. It's classified as an extension. I was like, wow, okay, I didn't see that one coming. So that's the problem. So, you know, shout out to Jerry here. But anyway, what I want to also tell you is how to uninstall add-ons because it's also important. There are two ways of uninstalling add-ons in Blender, and I'm going to show you both of them. Now, uninstalling Blender add-ons in 4.2.2 is a little bit different than it used to be because the correct procedure was to go to Edit and Preferences, Open Preferences, type the add-on name, untick this box here, Save Preferences, close this window, close Blender, then reopen Blender again, right? Go to Edit, Preferences, go to the same uh, add-on tab, type the name of the add-on, and then you had the, um, the option to remove from disk or remove from Blender. You don't see this here anymore. We can't really remove this unless I don't see an option, right? Even if we're going to refresh this here, nothing's going to happen. So that's a bit different. So this add-on kind of lingers in Blender even though we disabled it because this box only what it does it disables this add-on right so now i really don't know if it's a bug or it's gonna be changed or, or this is how blender is gonna be now that you can't really delete this shit i don't know but there's another way of removing add-ons from blender if you're gonna get conflicts you know um in in blender 4.2 so let's say you're gonna be uh, you know installing a lot of add-ons you're gonna be uninstalling them and eventually you're gonna have conflict so you're gonna have python errors and you don't know what the fuck is going on you need to run something that's called blender purge and it's really simple how to do this what you need to do is you need to close your blender right you need to go to your c drive you need to go to users your name then go to updata which is here and if you don't see that you need to enable hidden items or hidden folders uh, in this window, go to Updata, Roaming, and then Blender Foundation, Blender, and you need to delete the folder of the Blender version that you're working on. And in this case, it doesn't matter if it's 4.2.2 or 4.2.3 or 4.2.5, anything related to 4.2 is going to get nuked, right? So if I'm going to delete that folder, I nuked all the config settings, everything related to Blender 4.2.2. And you can see that my window got reset, my resolution got reset, all the add-ons are gone, everything got wiped. That's the only way to reset Blender to factory settings, okay? If you're going to go here to this and try to, you know, reset Blender to factory settings, this does fuck all, okay? They will, this will not remove the config files. You need to physically delete them from your disk. That is called Blender Purge, and this is something that you may want to do sometimes if shit gets out of control, okay? So I hope this is going to help you out. I was really confused when I couldn't install box cutter and I was getting a lot of errors with 4.2 Blender. I really don't like Blender 4.2, to be honest. And all these changes, but, uh, you know, there you go. It is what it is. But that brings me to one more tip I can give you in terms of, you know, not liking specific version of Blender or liking specific version of Blender. Like, for example, I really like working with 4.0.2. Um, That's my workhorse. Now, what you can do is... This is what I would suggest. If you find a Blender version you really like, then make a folder with the executable file, you know, exe file um, for that Blender, and just drop there all the add-ons that you think you, you know, you would be using with that version. Now remember that these add-ons have to be compatible with this version of Blender. Because for example, if I try to use decal machine that works with 4.2.2, .2, that version will not work with 4.1 because there were changes done to node system and how the sockets for nodes work in 4.2. Therefore, the decal libraries have to, had to be updated. So if you, for example, using decal machine in 4.0 and 4.2, the 4.2 decal machine library is going to be completely different. If you link them to the old decals, it will not work. So sometimes add-ons will undergo really heavy changes because Blender coding changed, right? So in this case, you know what I would suggest is making a folder with the executable file for Blender. All the versions of add-ons that work with this Blender are compatible with one another and just fucking keep it on cloud or wherever. And when you need it, you can always install it on a new machine, new disk or whatever, right? Because if you're going to try to download these old versions of add-ons from Blender Market, you know, Gumroad or even our site when using Materialworks, you may not be able to find these. 
For instance, we keep the previous version of MaterialWorks on our stores. If you buy and add on the MaterialWorks on our website, then you will have access to the previous version of MaterialWorks that works with 4.1, 4.0, because that's what I use. But normally you can't do that. You can't just buy a decal machine and hope that you know, you're gonna see the previous version of decal machine. It doesn't exist. It's just the latest one. So the only Blender version is going to work with it is going to be 4.2. Do you know what I mean? So these will be my tips for you for, you know, working with add-ons in the new Blender or any Blender really, you know. So again, make sure that you go into drag and drop and external add-ons to 4.2.2 and above. And you make some backups, you know, for the Blender version that you really like. And you find all the add-ons that work with one another. It's kind of games, you know. Uh, when you, uh, you know, you probably played something like Fallout 4 or XCOM 2, whatever, when it requires a lot of add-ons and you're going to find that very specific build of add-ons that work with one another and then patch drops and it's a fucking, you know, tears and drama, right? Because everything gets to sh goes to shit. So that's the same thing happens with Blender, okay? So be aware, you know, remember and uh, there you go. All right, well, that's it for this video. Hope it's going to help you out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next one.